Hello everybody, my name is Benji and welcome back to Dyson Sphere Program, where last time we managed to test out the signal tower and actually get some pretty darn good usage in on our secondary planet uh, to the point where we managed to actually take out the entirety of the fog on that planet. Now, I am certain that they will eventually dispatch another relay station from the Hive in order to re-establish contact on our secondary planet. But in the meantime, we're going to keep ticking off the Hive with our lovely solar sails, which we can see firing here in full array, full glory. We are starting to get to the point where the solar sails are going to be disappearing, which is why we're only seeing the one orbit instead of the artifact of the previous orbit that I attempted uh, and did not work super duper well. Uh, but you can see kind of this like really bursting effect, uh, and that's just an artifact of all of this loveliness. And our main concern today even though we have plenty of missile turrets and we have our new missile turret blueprint over here with all of our missile turrets and our gauss turrets and everything, I'd like to place down one or two more of those in the first place. Uh, and then in the second place, we put a bunch of signal towers all over the place. And then in the third place, I'd really like to have our key infrastructure defended with planetary shielding. So main infrastructure, of course, is going to consist of the mall. I just noticed, oh, 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 I see. It's because of the fact that it's on the different grid. Although it is still off by one, which is a little bit annoying that I'm just now noticing it. But at the end of the day, that is perfectly a-okay with me. I'd like to see what happens when I do this. New tutorial, planetary shields. Hold up a planetary shield, must do the planetary shield generator. Uh, 8.64 gigajoule energy reserve. Using energy stored in this reservoir. Takes time. Charge, activated as soon as the energy stored inside reaches 1.4 gigajoules. Power is halted, it goes down. 1.2 terajoules. Oh my gosh. Takes 200 kilojoules to defend against one damage, so a planetary shield with 1.2 terajoules can defend against 6 million damage. Upgrade the efficiency in the tech tree. If it gets pierced, it'll take time to restart. So, it is charging. Not quite to initiate point yet. Uh, oh wow, I can actually see the entire thing here. How's the power grid doing? It's rough, is what it is, but we can place more uh, ray shields. Or not, not ray shields, sorry. We can place more um, ray receiver, these guys, around. It's weird that I can't see it in its totality when I'm not clicked on it. That's got to be a setting, right? Planetary shield show. There we go. Okay, cool. So I can see it here. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, look at it. That's awesome. It's getting almost the whole way there. I think just because of the way that that's looking at the moment, I'd like to also place one on the bottom down here. Yeah, look at it. And then it hits the atmosphere. That's crazy. Oh, that's awesome. All right, cool. I love that. Um, let's play some more ray receivers. Now, I know I, I tried to say that these guys work better at the poles, and then I turned out that I was wrong. However, I do think that these guys are better at the poles because of the fact that they actually are constantly exposed to sunlight. So if we can have these guys up here on the poles, I think that will be super duper nice just to really have 
some more energy efficiency and energy production. Uh, and then the other main item on today's list, once we have our key infrastructure with the... Ooh, look at that. You can see the little, like, ripples. Oh, that's awesome looking. Uh, the other main objective today is going to be deuterium, and I do have some ideas about deuterium that I have not explored in previous playthroughs. So, we're going to definitely try that on for size and see how it goes today. Uh, looks like these are doing exactly what I was expecting them to do. We've got a nice little grid here. They are connected now, thanks to the signal towers. However... I'd like to put a signal tower on them, just to be certain. And then, yeah, look at that. The mall is covered. Majority of these guys are covered, but not quite all of them. And I think in terms of other key infrastructure, the oil is a major thing. This is a major thing. So I'll probably place one like right here and then over here. And then the smelting probably deserve one of their own well. So let me get some signal towers, place these all around. And then I've got some fractionators in my inventory, which is super handy. Uh, signal towers, please. Thanks. And then we can put the signal towers up here with our ray receivers, just to make sure that the ray receivers are all good. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. Uh, and then we can come down. And in terms of key infrastructure, like I said, science is a major one. Foundation required. My foundation required right there. It's dumb. All right, so right here we'll put one. And then by the oil, we'll put one, so like right here. And then over here in our main sort of production suite, we will put another one. And that's probably going to end up crashing the grid at some point. Generation capacity, 500. Consumption demand, 400. So no, did not in fact crash the grid. I'm actually quite pleased with that. So moving on from here, now that we've got the planetary shield. Oh yeah, no, mall and surrounding power infrastructure is 100% good. Um... I did not end up putting one on the ray receivers like a dunce, but that's fine. This guy is probably almost to a point that it can start. Yeah, there we go. Now it's starting to do it. So that should cover all of this. I might have to move it a bit to the left. I don't know. And then this one will start up very soon. Yep, there it goes. That'll definitely cover all the oil processing. And then this guy should start up very soon as well. There we go. Perfect. So moving on to the next project of our fractionators. Where did I say I was going to do, by the way? I know I, I know I had a place. Ah, yes, it was over here underneath the smelters, which I also need to put a planetary shield on. I swear, I've got the brain of, uh, I don't know, something with very fast memory loss. I've got the brain of somebody with very fast memory loss. There we go. That's perfect. Um, can't offend anybody by saying that. I'm sure of it. So yeah, we'll put this here. Make sure that we've got some of the planetary shielding going on. And then down here, we can do our fractionators. So, fractionators. Let's talk about them real quick. Fractionators take this wonderful thing. Where is it at? Where is the fraction? Fractionators... Take this wonderful recipe of hydrogen to deuterium at a rate of 1% does the uh, hydrogen actually get turned into deuterium, which is a bit of a pain in the butt because 1% is not very fast. However, something that is very, very nice is the fact that fractionators do not actually deplete 
the hydrogen unless it is actually turned into deuterium. So the main methodology that I see lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people use is they take a fractionator like this. They have their outputs facing into the middle. This is where the deuterium actually comes from. Go on ahead and just do a Mark I belt for that at the end of the day. Uh, and then what people do is they have a loop of hydrogen that goes around the outside like so. And then within the loop itself, they have the hydrogen come along the side uh, in such a way that the hydrogen goes into the side like this. Uh, I guess technically if I had built it a little farther out, I could have done it into the side like that, but that's fine. Um, and the thing that I find really interesting about this is the probabilistic nature of deuterium fraction. Deuterium fractionation has this really weird compound probability thing. I don't quite understand it to the fullest of my ability because I'm an engineer and a physics guy. I don't like working with probabilities uh, and I don't do probabilities all that much. Ah, yes, light oil has stopped. This is why we're doing this, by the way. Um, but essentially, because of the fact that it's 1%, if you send one line of hydrogen through and then daisy chain them, the probability actually goes down from each little cell here to the next, which is super duper odd. And I've, I've never understood it. I wish that I could say that I did understand it, but I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Um, so I, I have no hope of, of really understanding and getting it, I guess. Uh, but essentially, yeah, that is a property of probabilities that these things do, in fact, uh, just decrease in probability as you compound them in with one another. Uh, and that's just a thing that we have to be careful of. So in order to avoid such a problem coming to fruition, we can simply sideload with a splitter these belts and we can have an output priority into the side like this so that we have the hydrogen come out of here, hit the thing, go up into the thing, and then have it go down, around, and side load, specifically so that it only loads. This is kind of like a weird priority thing as well with belts. If you side load it like this, the priority is given to the straight lane rather than this lane. So it's a way to get priority without a priority input splitter, which drains UPS in the late game. Um, so what we can do for our fractionator loops is just kind of have something like this. Uh, what I might actually do is expand upon this ever so slightly uh, and have a secondary, I guess I'll just go on ahead and do it like, I could have it go into the side here, that way we avoid that kind of an issue. Like this? Yeah, because I can't put things there. So this still maintains our priority, which is super nice. Uh, and then what I might be able to do actually is keep this the way that I had it. Yes, I can. Oh, glorious. Glorious, 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 glorious. I can keep it just the way that it was. Like this, like this, like this. Have the hydrogen output and do that. Oh, that broke it apparently though. There we go, look at that. Unfortunately, that means that I can no longer filter it though, or I can no longer output priority it though, which is totally fine by me in all honesty. And then we can just do like so. Perfect. So this is how we're gonna be able to get two lines of hydrogen uh, coming into two lanes of fractionators on either side here. And then we can just paste down more of these uh, as we need more hydrogen. 
And then the other thing that I'm sure you noticed as I was setting all this up is I'm going to be inputting proliferation. And I think we're just going to do proliferation processing right here. Just take this coal node and turn it into a little proliferation hotspot. Or maybe this one up here. So something along those lines. We'll make sure that we have proliferation going in because that means that we get more deuterium per hydrogen, which is great. Uh, it's already a one-to-one. -one. So yeah, and what's the purpose of all of this? What do, we, what do we need deuterium for? Well, we need deuterium for a couple of things. Uh, nothing at the moment, I don't think. But farther along down the tech tree, I'll go on ahead and pause here. Farther along down the tech tree with the mini fusion generator, we've got deuterium fuel rods. Uh, that's going to help with power generation. Strange matter is a thing that requires a lot of deuterium, and that's something that we're going to want in very high quantities. Uh, I don't think any of this requires deuterium. Nah, just graphene. It's fine. Uh, I don't think any of this requires deuterium. Nah, it doesn't. But something that does require deuterium fuel rods a little bit later down the line is small carrier rockets for the vertical launching silo, which is how we actually built our Dyson Sphere. So yeah, deuterium fuel and deuterium itself is quite important. So we're going to want a ton of it. So we may as well go on ahead and just make sure that we've got enough of it. So yeah, I'm going to copy this design uh, a couple of times and make sure that we've got enough fractionators and everything working properly. Uh, and then I will bring you guys back in and show you the glory of it all working. See you in a moment. All right, and with that, we've got ourselves some proliferation Mark II ready to go, self-proliferating as well as using proliferation in the input, which is actually quite helpful. Uh, I think I'm also going to extend this by one more just for the heck of it. Um, because of the fact that we are proliferating, we are getting extra products and a little bit of a product slowdown. So at the end of the day, this is actually quite nice. Um, and we can use the same amount of output for input. And then just in case, I could also even another one of these, although I don't really think that that's necessary. I think that's good as is. So now we've got proliferation being shared across. We've got proliferation coming into these and they're all set and ready to go. So we'll go on ahead and hit demand on our hydrogen, which we have plenty of in storage. Where's my oil processing plant? All the way over here. Yeah, we've got plenty of hydrogen in storage. You can see all of these are full, which is why our oil is really, really plugged up at the moment. Uh, and then as well, if we take a look at our planetary shield, we have a full planetary shield uh, covering pretty much everything that's critical infrastructure at the moment. Uh, let me go on ahead and orient toward the North Pole. So we've got ourselves all of our science and oil production covered by shielding. We've got all of our main intermediate processing covered by shielding. There we go. We've got deuterium. Uh, we've got all of our science covered by shielding. We've got... The majority of our uh, EM rail ejectors covered by shielding, which is super duper nice. The entirety of the mall. And then another one that I placed down is over here covering our planetary defensive blueprint. And then, yeah, of course, as you can see, we've got our proliferated hydrogen going round and round and round and round and round. Uh, it's making hydrogen at a rate of 98.5. So this is actually a little bit better. It's around 2%, which is super duper nice. Uh, and you can see that each of these is roughly the same between 1.5 and, and 2% and 1%, usually averaging out to about 1%. And we're getting, it looks like almost a full six per second out of this. I don't remember how many this is off the top of my head. Uh, it is 28, so 14 on either side. It is an expandable blueprint. And of course, it does take a while for it to fully saturate, especially because of the fact that we are only using Mark II belts here. But it looks like that is the full saturation complete. Uh, so I could place down another one of these, and I probably will end up placing down another one of these eventually. And we have our supply of deuterium very nicely oriented. And yeah, the proliferation juice is literally right here, so we don't really need to worry about that at all. 
Our power grid is still doing good. Our planetary shield doesn't have a whole lot of leeway, unfortunately, but that's just because everything is operational at the moment. Uh, I put down some more ray receivers down here at the bottom. That way we could have a little bit more power generation, and I'll probably do even more of that in the coming future uh, as we continue to expand. I swapped this over to demand because I noticed that it wasn't really doing a whole ton. Uh, and then these are still all demand. Looks like we need to add some iron into our input and a couple of other things. So that's going to mainly be what I work on in between episodes is just patching different holes and in infrastructure, making sure that things are properly uh, working and aligning. Yeah, our entire light oil supply is drained, which is really nice to see, but also really sad to see. I'd like to hook up all of our spare nodes that are around. We've got some iron nodes just kind of chilling, some coal nodes just kind of chilling. I'd like to have all of those up and running and ready to go. Uh, and then last but not least, we can start to consider what is necessary for purple science. So if I come in here and just pause, cause there's not really any point to anything. Attack drones would also be super nice. That's uh, another thing. But if we go to the information matrix, we need processors, which we don't have a ton of. They're on the second planet, but we don't have a ton of them. It would be really nice to upgrade that system a little bit. And then we need this other thing, which is called a particle broadband. That is these guys, which requires carbon nanotubes, silica crystals, and plastic. Plastic we need to expand for sure as a result of that. Uh, silica crystals, probably same thing, again, on the second planet. And then the high-strength material, which is the carbon nanotube, is just titanium and graphite. So, er, sorry, not graphite, graphene. So essentially, next episode, we are going to start going into the high-strength material, particle, broadband, and information matrix. And then with said information matrix, we can unlock the Corvette for space fleets and space fleet slots, which is super nice. We can automate these and add them to the mall and then destroyers as well a little bit later, which I'm super excited for. Uh, another thing that might actually be very nice is a supersonic missile set so that we can have faster missiles as well as a couple of other things uh, for some better planetary defenses. Which isn't something that's a super big deal, but definitely something that I want to keep an eye on. So next time we're going to finally start progressing toward purple science, and in between episodes I'm going to expand upon everything that we've got currently, uh, or just kind of pasting different blueprints down over and over and over again, uh, like the plastic blueprint, like the sulfuric acid blueprint, uh, like the graphene blueprint, uh, anything else? Just a, a couple of other things. I'll look around. Hmm, green motors are lacking. Why are green motors lacking? Magnetic coils? Yeah, magnetic coils. So, yeah, upgrades are in our future. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this time, though. So, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. But without further ado, adios, sayonara, au revoir, hasta la vista, das vidania, vidizien, ciao, and goodbye. Please save yourselves a fantastic rest of your day. Get some sleep if you need to. Don't forget to stay hydrated. This video is in the bag. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later, y'all.